do you know your grammar? Are you making these common grammar mistakes? I'm pretty sure that you are, many English learners do, but you may not be aware of the fact that you're making these mistakes. Guys, in this video lesson, we're going through 12 common grammar mistakes you're most likely making. We'll go through the mistakes. We'll go through explanations to help you understand why these mistakes are bad and they're wrong and how you can improve, develop your grammar skills to speak, to communicate more effectively in English. Guys, if you're new here to my YouTube channel, welcome. My name's Adriana from EnglishTeacherAdriana.com and I help English learners improve their English, boost their confidence, to speak English with confidence. If you'd like to drastically improve your confidence speaking in English in less than 30 minutes a day, I have two things for you to do. First of all, hit subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get that bell, you know when I'll post my next video lesson here, my YouTube channel, to help you better understand how you can improve your English. Also, in the description below this video, there is a link for you to download my free audio guide where I teach you and break down exactly what you need to be doing every single day to learn English, to learn grammar, vocabulary, phrasal verbs, to improve your pronunciation, so that you can speak English confidently. It is possible to speak English confidently, to be fluent, provided that you follow the teachings and principles I share with you in my free guide in the description below this video. Click that link, enter your name, your email address, and I'll send you that straight away. Okay guys, so as I mentioned in this lesson, we're going through grammar mistakes. Don't be too hard on yourself if you make any of these mistakes. Even sometimes I make these mistakes, okay? We'll go through them, we'll analyze why they're wrong, why they're right, and how you can improve. Now guys, as there are many mistakes, and I would love to hear if you are making them, don't forget to share with me in the comments below what mistakes you're making so that I can see what areas you need help with for future video lessons. So are you ready to fix your grammar mistakes? Let's begin. Mistake number one, writing you're great to talk to instead of you're great to talk to. Look guys, when I say these two sentences out loud, they are pronounced the same, but they're written completely differently. And if you're making this mistake, it's a big grammar mistake. Guys, your, so spelling Y-O-U-R, we use your for possessions, for possessives. For example, your hair, your eyes, your bag, your hands. To make this grammatically correct, you need to use a contracted form of you are, and that is your. You're great to talk to. Now there's another mistake you may have overlooked, and this is to. In the first sentence, the T and double O, this is wrong. It's a big grammar mistake. It should be just to with one O. Now we use to with double O when we're talking about excess. For example, too much chocolate, too much food, too much exercise. When we're describing something in excess. But here we only need to use to as a preposition to refer to who we're talking to. Guys, if you're struggling to understand prepositions, especially when to use to and to, let me know in the comments below and tell me what problems you're having and I'll try to get a lesson up here on my channel to help you better understand this. The second big grammar mistake you're most likely making is found in these two sentences. Have a look at them. That's their food and that's their food. Again, we say them out loud very similarly, but we write them differently. Which one do you think is correct? If you answered sentence two, you're correct. Sentence one sounds great when we say it out loud, but if we write it like this, it's wrong. It's a big mistake because you're using the wrong there when writing it down. We use there to refer to positions or places, whereas there is used to refer to the possessive form of the subject they. For example, their books, their eyes, their clothes, their tables. But we use there to refer to position, places, and locations. For example, I put my phone over there, or you will find the books there. Now the third common grammar mistake I've heard time and time again is with misuse of the word boring. So for example, the sentences, I'm bored, or I'm so boring. Guys, if you'd like to describe that you are bored, so you're not having fun, maybe watching a TV show, hanging out with friends, then you need to describe this using the sentence, I am bored. But if you feel that you have a boring personality, so you're dull, you're not interesting, 
then. And only then can you use this sentence, I am boring. Guys, this mistake I've heard, I, I hear it every single day. <laughs> I hear many English learners saying, I am boring, I am boring. Guys, I'm sure you're not boring. But if you feel that you are not interested in a topic, in an event or something, then you need to express this using the sentence, I am bored. But this sentence, I am boring, describes you. You as a character, as a person, that you're dull, you're not interesting. Try to avoid making this mistake. It's a mistake that many people make. Guys, if you're making this mistake, if you've made this mistake recently, let me know in the comments below. Would love to hear if this is something new and hopefully you better understand now to never make this mistake again. Now mistake four, guys, I don't blame you if you're making this mistake. Maybe you structure sentences differently in your native language. Guys, let's have a look at these two examples. Sentence one, I like very much ice cream or I like ice cream very much. Guys, it's a simple mistake. Maybe you've made it in the beginning, but to progress from an intermediate to an advanced English learner, this is a big mistake, especially in written form. Guys, a phrase very much is used to modify a verb phrase. So here in this sentence, I like ice cream, here we have the verb phrase, and to make this grammatically correct, we need to add very much to the end of the sentence, not before. So the correct way to express yourself that you really, really like ice cream would be, I like ice cream very much. Again, I like ice cream very much. Guys, it's a small mistake, but it does make the difference in the world structuring your sentences correctly, especially in written form and in professional situations. Now the fifth grammar mistake is very similar to the fourth one. Have a look at these two sentences. Is my food ready or is ready my food? Guys, if you notice that you're making the fourth and also this mistake regularly when speaking and writing in English, most likely it's because you're translating from your native language to the English language. Really against this, I've talked a lot about this on my YouTube channel. I do suggest that you watch this video lesson here where I talk exactly how to train yourself to stop translating, to speak more naturally, to avoid mistakes such as this. Guys, in these two sentences, you are asking a question. So you need to establish what? What information do you need from that question? Here you are asking about my food. You want to know, well, I want to know if my food is ready. So we need to put the subject, my food, at the beginning of the sentence. So is auxiliary verb my food here we have the subject ready to overcome this problem guys i do suggest that you start training your brain to stop translating it is a long-term process but it does really help you reduce these mistakes when speaking of writing in english again watch this video lesson it will help you start doing something today to improve your english now guys before we continue with this video if you would like more grammar lessons more help identifying your mistakes to improve your grammar skills let me know by smashing that like button also leave me a comment below this video telling me what problems do you have with grammar the more detail you add the better i can help you in the future now mistake six is another sentence structure problem have a look at these two sentences where can i find a bank or where i find a bank guys which sentence do you think is correct Think about it a little bit. The sentence, where can I find a bank, is correct. Here we are asking a question. So the word order of can I is very important. Now you may be confused with this one, I don't blame you, because of your confusion with telling someone something. If you're telling someone something, you can use the structure I can. For example, I can find a bank in the center. But when we are asking a question, we need to change the sentence structure. Where can I find a bank? Careful with the sentence structure. Now you may also be using the wrong words in the wrong situations, and this is probably because you're translating. For example, have a look at these two sentences. Which sentence do you think is correct? Sentence one, the place what we went to, or the place that we went to. Guys, if you chose a second sentence, you are correct. Now in your language, you may use what to refer to places and things, but in English, we use that, the place that we went to. 
Remember, we use that to refer to ideas and things that are distant. So this being close, but that being far. Not what in English we have that to use in these situations. Now, mistake eight is a big mistake. I hear a lot of people who are living in the US make, a lot of English learners. Guys, you just need to remember this, okay? It has to do with the use of the article the for countries. Guys, if we're talking about the US, then we have to use the article the. Have a look at these two sentences. I live in US or I live in the US. Okay, you may have got it. The correct answer is I live in the US. Same goes with the UK, with the Europe, I live in the European Union. When we're talking about countries that are grouped, that are some sort of federations, that are a group of countries. So guys, remember, especially if you're living in the UK, in the US, you have to use the article the. Moving on to grammar mistake nine. Have a look at these two sentences. She doesn't listen to me or she doesn't listen me. Guys, here the correct sentence would be, she doesn't listen to me. Now, you may not have prepositions in your language, but in English, <laughs> they are a little bit confusing. I do understand that it can be difficult, but you do need to use a preposition in this sentence for it to be grammatically correct. Now, let's dissect this sentence further. Now, to help you better understand why we use to in this situation, let's have a look at the word listen in detail. So this is gonna get really technical. Guys, the word listen is intransitive. So this means you must use a prepositional phrase headed by to. So simply put, with the word listen, you always need to use to to refer to who you're listening to, what you're listening to. Just keep in mind that listen, we need to use to after it. It simply doesn't make sense to just say, listen me. In English, we need to use to listen to me, <laughs> listen to him, listen to music, listen to podcasts, listen to finish the sentence. And this will be then grammatically correct. Now, grammar mistake 10, I even hear the most advanced English learners make this mistake. Have a look at these two sentences. There is seven girls in the class or there are seven girls in the class. Which one do you think is correct? Okay, you probably got it right. You're probably like, this is really simple, Adriana. Dude, clearly it's there are seven girls in the class. But guys, when you're writing really fast, when you're speaking, I'm 100% sure that you've probably made this mistake. I even make this mistake sometimes in a native English speaker just in speaking. Guys, if we have a plural, girls he has plural, then we need to use a plural form of the auxiliary verb be. There are. There are seven girls in the class. Not there is, okay? They are for plurals, there is for singulars. Mistake 11 is a little bit tricky. I really want you to put your thinking caps on. Think about this one. So have a look at these two sentences. I didn't meet nobody or I didn't meet anybody. Think about it. Which one's correct and why? I didn't meet nobody or I didn't meet anybody. Guys, if you chose I didn't meet anybody, you're correct. In the English language, we cannot use double negatives, okay? Double negatives means a positive. So for this reason, I didn't meet nobody is incorrect because nobody means no one and I didn't, two negatives make a positive. So this is grammatically incorrect. To express that you didn't meet a single person, be correct to say I didn't meet anybody. I didn't meet anybody. Now guys, with the next mistake, I'm sure that you've heard a lot of English speakers using this in spoken form. I'm even a victim of doing this sometimes. Sorry guys. <laughs> but a lot of uh, English speakers make this mistake. It is viewed as a bad mistake. I've actually over the years really uh, improved my speaking skills because I don't do this that much. You know, when you're in your teenage years, a lot of native English speakers simply make this mistake because everybody's talking like this. You would have heard guarantee these TV shows. And the mistake is use. For example, how he's doing today, but this is grammatically incorrect, guys. It should actually be, how are you doing today? If we're talking to a group of people, we don't use this. I do understand that in your native languages, you maybe do have the you plural form, but in English, guys, it is a big mistake to say use, how are you doing today? But if you do make this mistake, you cannot be making this mistake in proficiency exams. You cannot make this in written form. Even though I do admit that I do make this mistake, I am aware and I never make this mistake in written form. 
also not in professional settings because this is just a mistake I make in conversational settings. So guys, if you do make this mistake, try to just get over it and stop making this mistake as it is a bad habit to develop. So guys, do you make any of these mistakes or are you perfect? Let me know in the comments below this video, which mistakes do you make and what are you doing to improve your mistakes? Remember guys, if you love this video lesson, make sure to like it, hit subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get notified that bell when I post my next video lesson. Also guys, if you love this grammar lesson, make sure to check out these two videos to further practice and improve your grammar skills. Thanks for watching, thanks for being here, and I look forward to seeing you in my next lesson. Bye for now.